Croeso y Gumri, welcome to Wales. For this trip, we'll be visiting two national parks, Snowdonia and the Bracken Beacons. This is Snowdon. Over a three day period, we're going to try and take in the great variety of roads that these parks offer. Our Welsh journey starts just after midday in the town of Betsy Coed. With several hours of riding already under our belts, we decided on a short loop of Snowdonia to start our trip. Our first port of call being the Snowdonia viewpoint on the A498. After a few miles on the A5, it's not until you turn onto the A4086 at Capelcurig that you get a sense of the landscape that lies ahead. Well worth to take the time to stop here, take in the view of Snowdonia, grab an ice cream and practice your slow motion pointing. Back on the bikes, we head on towards the picturesque village of Beth Gellet, known for the fable of Gellet, the faithful hound that saved his master's child. From Beth Gullet, we head to Blyneye Festinog, chasing rivers fueled with recent rains through valleys and ancient oak woodlands. The area around Festiniog shows its industrial past, with slate mines and quarries creating the atmosphere that we see today. And it's an adrenaline junkies playground too, being home to the world's longest underground zip line. And as the sun falls low in the sky, we head back to Betisikoid, Mecca for walkers, climbers and mountain bikers, and to the Swallow Falls Hotel.
Baradar, day two of our Wales trip. Last night we stayed at the Swallow Falls, just outside Betsy Coed, and today we're going to do some more Snowdonia before heading south towards the Brecon Beacons. We have our route programmed in our trusty TomTom, -tom, but we have also Maya from Maya's Motorcycle Adventures who will show us some of the really, really cool places to go. Yes, we, we work together on the route and um, I've changed it slightly to include some of my favourite places, some of the great spots to stop for um, uh, photos and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them too. Leaving Betsy Coed on the A5 again, we head east before turning right onto the B4407 to lead into the depths of Snowdonia. After running alongside the river country, the narrow B4407 climbs into open moorland before leading to the Cum Convol viewpoint with its stunning views of the western side of the National Park. From here, we head to Festiniog and then southwards past the Trosfunneth hydroelectric power station and out of the National Park. The A470 to Dolgethley is fast and open, and while there are alternative and more interesting routes, we're heading for the Brecon Beacons, although we did take a slight detour to take in the Mach Loop. The Mach Loop regularly sees RAF planes practicing their low-level flying. If you feel able to climb the valley sides, you can actually watch them fly beneath you. Rested and rehydrated, we head onwards. There are some superb riding roads in Mid Wales, but we pressed on, only stopping for lunch in Belth Wells. So we've arrived in Belth Wells, which is where we'll be staying tonight, but thanks to this glorious weather, and we've got a bit of spare time, so we're going to go out and try some of the Brecon Beacons, starting with the Gospel Pass. After lunch, we rode across to Hay on Wye, having a brief stop on the way for some essential photography. We then head for the Gospel Path, a narrow, twisting, stunner of a road to the east of the hill known as Tumper, or sometimes referred to as Lord Hereford's Knob. <coughs> It's best to be cautious here, as not only may you meet oncoming traffic, but there are four-legged obstacles aplenty too.
Unfortunately, the lower end of the gospel path was closed, but as we had some extra time, some glorious weather, and some GoPro batteries left, Maya suggested that we travel to the other side of the Brecon Beacons to try the Devil's Staircase, one of her favourite spots. The road alongside Lynn Brianna is truly stunning, yet the GoPro footage you see here doesn't really do justice to the scale or the beauty of this amazing part of Wales. And it was quiet too, so keep it a secret. The end of the Devil Staircase brings an end to a great day, completed by finding our hotel in Brilth Wells with a cold drink and an Indian takeaway. Day three, and we left Care Beris Manor Hotel to head back through Brecon and onto the Penderen Distillery, home of the world famous Welsh single malt whisky. After a quick fuel stop in Brecon, we're ready to get straight into racking up the miles on our trusty steeds. The A470 is a beautiful road, but very busy. After the Beacons Reservoir, it's onwards to Penderyn. We did have some GoPro issues along the way, one aimed too low and another on time-lapse setting. So much for technology, eh? Mikko treated himself to a bottle, maybe a well-deserved treat, having spent three days with the rest of us.
So over the last couple of days, we've traveled over all kinds of different tarmac, from beautifully surfaced roads to some slightly scabbier back lanes, but we've got no plans of going off-road like we did in the Lake District, so it's purely tarmac. Gary, tires for just tarmac riding. Just tarmac, I think, uh, with the bikes that we're on and we're just touring, um, and we're gonna hit, we've been very lucky on this particular trip, but you usually will hit, especially if you come to Wales, you'll usually hit some nice weather, some, some, some horrible wet. weather, which I'm led to believe there's some storms coming. So for that, you'd want a, the best all-rounder that you can find without it being an adventure tire. Um, so from our ranges, we've got fitted to the bikes, we would have the T32, uh, which is new for this year. Uh, it came out, came out earlier this year, and it's got some wonderful technology in it, some pulse grooves in the treads, and. Um, things like that, just to speed up the water disbursement, basically. Um, so if you've got no plans on going off-road at all, um, then a, tour, a good touring tyre will, especially the, the roads around here, that there's more than enough grip. And good longevity as well. Good longevity as well, yeah, and, that, and that's what you want. And, and yeah, you know, yeah. yes, a sports tyre will offer more grip, but really, we're just we're lambing around, aren't we? You know, for me, you get the best all-round performance from a sport touring tyre. You know, they're not that far behind a sports, mm -hmm. in terms of outright grip. Yeah a grip level that you'll never get anywhere near to for, for general road riding. Yeah, you know, yeah, right, as right. quick as we all think we are, the, the, tire, the limiting factor is us. We've had this conversation already. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. limiting factor is us. Yeah. It's not the bike, it's not the tyres, it's not any of the components, it's us. Yeah. Back into the Brecon Beacons and onto the Black Mountain Road. Known to many as a top gear road, thanks to the fact that it'd be used by the popular BBC programme. truly stunning stretch of tarmac. Little wonder that it's so popular that the ice cream van does a roaring trade. Mountain Road complete, our Welsh journey ends, though we left very aware that the country has so much more to offer. Three days were nowhere near enough to truly explore the area, and that's the perfect excuse to return to this stunning landscape once more. <laughs> 